In this video, I'm going to talk about the square of the Hamiltonian. This video is part four of a mini series dedicated to stationary states. You can find some links in the description below. First of all, I'm going to write up the time independent Schrodinger equation because we're going to be using this in a little derivation that I want to do in this video. So the time independent Schrodinger equation, as we've seen in previous videos, can be written like this h bar acting on little psi is the same as e multiplying little psi. So this is just like an eigenvector equation from linear algebra. We have an operator acting on this psi, and that's the same as this eigenvalue, e, multiplying psi. So we're going to use this time-independent Schrodinger equation, uh, and we're going to derive a little expression that is analogous for the Hamiltonian squared. So what does it mean to square an operator? Right? This guy is an operator. If you square an operator, that means you're doing the operator twice. So the square of the momentum operator is something we looked at when we were talking about kinetic energy. You can find that in some of the earlier videos in this quantum mechanics playlist. When we were talking about squaring uh, the momentum operator, we had something that looked like this. We had p squared. And that was the same as applying p once and then p again. In this video, we're going to be talking about h squared. So we're going to be applying the Hamiltonian once and then again. So what does that actually mean? Let's go ahead and do a little derivation. So the Hamiltonian operator squared, when that acts on little psi, what is that going to give us? This over here is actually equivalent to the Hamiltonian operator acting on something that the Hamiltonian operator has already acted on, because we're doing it twice. So that's what it's equivalent to. So this is the same as squaring the Hamiltonian. Uh, and this is actually the same as the Hamiltonian operator times e psi. Right? We can get that from up here, the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So what we're going to have is the Hamiltonian operator acting on a constant e times psi. Right? So we've used the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Now what we can do is we can pull this constant out the front. You can always swap these guys around with constants. Why is that the case? Well, constants are not going to be affected by derivatives or by multiplying by functions. So that's commutativity. That's the property where you can swap them around. So this constant I'm going to pull out the front. I'm going to have e times the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi. Here we have this combination again. And what is this combination equal to? Well, this combination is the same as e times e times psi. So again, we're using the time independent Schrodinger equation up here uh, to find that it's e times psi. And now what we have is a constant times a constant. We can group that together and turn that into a constant squared. So we have e squared times psi. So in the end, what did we actually get? We found that the Hamiltonian operator squared acting on psi is equivalent to E squared acting on psi. This is the takeaway message of this video. I'll put it in a box. So how did we get this? I'll do a quick little summary. We used the time independent Schrodinger equation. So we had that uh, given to us from before. This is the time independent Schrodinger equation written in terms of the Hamiltonian operator. Then we understood the Hamiltonian operator squared to actually be the operator acting twice. This is analogous to how we talked about momentum squared uh, before. So it's just the operator acting on uh, this little psi twice. So then what we can do is we can act on it first with the Hamiltonian operator and then with the Hamiltonian operator again. But we know if we split this up into this form over here, this guy is equivalent to e times psi. And then what we can do is we can swap the order. We can move the constant out to the front. We can apply the Hamiltonian operator again. And that's going to give us another e. And so we have two e's, two factors of e, which gives us e squared. So acting with the Hamiltonian operator squared is the same as multiplying by e squared. And this is what we're actually going to be using in the later videos. And it's actually going to be very important in finding the variance of the Hamiltonian. 
We already have the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. We know it's just E, but we want to find what the variance of the Hamiltonian is. And that's going to give us an idea of how uh, spread is, is happening in uh, the stationary states. We're actually going to find that the variance is zero and there's no spread. All values of uh, the measurement are actually going to yield a value of E. So it's just going to be E, 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 E. So what we found in this video is this useful little fact. You can find all the other videos in this quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.